Hey, hello there. Oh, hold on a sec. Let me move. Let hello. Me move, Alan. I noticed Alan. I'm on the bottom. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Women on top. Women on top. Um, oh, uh, is that hello. what this one's called? <laughs> um, hello, this, welcome to uh, the state uh, mess we're in. The state we're in. The mess we're in. I um, might take a while to get warmed up because um, I saw something really unpleasant last night. Uh, a a um, horror TV show uh, called Channel Zero. Do you know it? The second, no. ser the second series is great. You can get it on Amazon Prime. Second series is great. It's, the second series, the first series is a bit is a bit stiff. The second series is um, called No End House, and it's very good. And then the third series is so unpleasant that I haven't been able to get it out of my, my mind all day. <laughs> Something happens at the end of the second episode. It's like, oh, shit. I literally had to turn it off because it was too, I, I, I could feel it burrowing into my, into my consciousness, you know? So. Uh, did you have that this sounds awful. Yeah, it, it kind yeah. of is, but I've I've always liked horror, you know, and I like it when it's uh, this is a very interesting kind of style. They, I don't know, it's it's hard to explain, but it's very very good. Anyway, that's not about uh, 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 gender politics. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's get into that. Let's get into that. It's been an interesting couple of days with uh, Kira Bell's case proceeding. Um, the uh, and I notice uh, the thing I've been seeing is a lot of Trump-like uh, figures trying to muddy the waters and trying to, tr like, like Joel and Mom, uh, like Trump coming up to an election, is trying to cast a cloud of doubt around it by saying that um, there are no trans children being represented. And the truth is that the, the defense could not find um, could not find uh, witnesses that uh, that you know that that, that were that were worthy of the seriousness of the situation, you know. Well, I'm quite. I mean, if you know, the the defence has its ability, presumably, to call whoever it can find or whoever is willing to step up. So I can't think that this is some grand conspiracy that suddenly mm. has been able to be, you know, some some thing that's been able to be pulled by some bunch of lawyers. Um, to actually prevent the defence from calling any witnesses. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Now, I think I think live tweeting from it is very interesting. You know, yeah. I think there's be some factual tweets. It's it's very interesting. I think I think the way the case is being laid out is very interesting, and it will be interesting to see what they say. What I find um, tedious, uh, I think, is the word, is the talk around. Ah, oh, well, you know, it'll be abortion next. No. <laughs> Look, if it is abortion next, we will defend that. But it isn't going to be abortion next because there's already limits on Gillick competency. We already have this, right? Mm. An abortion is not puberty blockers. They are not the same thing. And yes. I, I find that I have this argument with people a lot when, you know, instead of answering a question that I've got, they'll change it. They'll, yeah. they'll move it into something else. They'll morph it into, um, oh, well, you know, it was like Section 28, or would you would you say this if if it was gay people? And I can say, well, no, I wouldn't, because we're not talking about gay people. We're talking about a different scenario. And if you can't address the scenario that I'm talking about, you've got, I've got to wonder, isn't your argument strong enough to, you know, to exactly. be Exactly. All they do, and especially the comparison to gay people, it's like, why not compare to anorexics or people with eating disorders? Why is it mm. always gays? You know, mm. why is it anything else? Um, that's so insidious. I find it's a much it's a much closer comparison as well. Uh, uh, I can't remember who wrote this, but um, someone said that the the kind of girls who are who are identifying uh, as as boys and as non-binary and stuff like this now are the same kids who in the past were anorexic and you know these are very intelligent, uh, sensitive kids, um, and uh, you know they're 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 influenced by. YouTubers well, and, and the, the, I, I was, the, the wave of culture that's leading that way, you know. Yeah. I mean, I was asking, I think I asked this question about two or three years ago, is that has there been a drop in the number of girls being preferred for anorexia? Oh, that's interesting, now, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, people didn't really have the, have the numbers. And, of course, no. it's possible that if, um, if the, the trans thing hadn't come along with the massive, massive explosion of social media, it's possible that, um, you know, anorexia would have gone up and up anyway. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's possible that both could have gone up. 
but it's, yeah, I, it's I think both. it would I be interesting. These, yeah, these detransitioners are saying they also have eating disorders or had eating disorders simultaneously. But one thing we know is the number of lesbians has gone way down. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, in a way, it's gone up because not men, <laughs> not men can say they're lesbians. So, you know. <laughs> he balances it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. saying with Debbie Hayden, for young people these days to be on the internet, it's like walking down the strip in Las Vegas with just neon lights everywhere saying, trans, trans, go trans. You yeah, know, yeah, come yeah, into yeah, my yeah. trans casino. You're just being lured into trans everywhere you go. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah. there's there's a it's just so fat. I mean, I would love, uh, oh, I forgot to say, we have Jane Claire Jones coming on soon. Um, in fact, I should I should take this out of widescreen in case she's already there. No, she's not. Um, <laughs> but uh, but um, uh, I'd love to talk to Jane about the inability of people um, to answer questions. Like uh, I'm engaged at the moment in a conversation with a journalist and uh, I won't say, I won't say his name, but um, he simply refuses to answer any questions on this subject. Because, like, for instance, one of the questions I've asked is, can a man be a lesbian? Okay, no response, you know? Um, and these questions, like, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, the, the, the court's case is very specific, but there is a belief in, and, and I spoke to uh, Heather Bruskell Evans about this. I've got a video about, about um about it coming soon, uh, uh, an interview I did with her. And she she was talking about, uh, there's a review into the practices of the Tavistock. And her worry is that the review will be conducted along these lines. Uh, uh, are the Tavistock misdiagnosing children who aren't trans? As if everyone agrees on the definition that there are things called trans children and we must yeah. protect them. Now, the thing is, that is what is up for debate. And, and, and obviously, when you get into that area of what exactly do you mean when you say trans? What do you mean? That's when the other side just shuts down. Mm -hmm. Shuts down completely. It's like their brains can't deal with it, you know? And, and it's just everyone's accepted this, this uh, phenomenon. But the truth is, as we know, there are millions of different things that make up the trans phenomenon, yeah. including parents who have severe Munchausen's, you know, by proxy, you know, there's so many things that go into it. So the idea of saying, so that review, as Heather said, better be on that question. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you mean when you say trans? What do you mean? You know, yes. I mean, I think, yeah, that's a very good, it's a very good starting point, isn't it? Because without that, the, the, you know, you're, you're not having a particularly honest discussion because people no. are talking about different things and almost purposefully talking about different like things. I would like to see a judge yes. say you can't use the word trans kid. You could literally not use it. You can say children who need medicine. You can say children who have dysphoria. You cannot label a child as trans because you can't define what that is. And once you yes. do that, you start arguing that they're entitled to things. When you just, you know, you need to describe the specific condition they have, yes. uh, you know, on medical grounds and not on identitarian grounds, and then mm. you need to prescribe the right medicine for it and justify it. So they shouldn't even admit the word. Into, I'll, in I'll, cases, I'll, you know? I'll give you a brilliant example of how this came up uh, last week as well. Rosie Duffield got the usual um, uh, twats in labor um, uh, complaining about her because she she liked a tweet by Maya Forstadter, where Maya Forstadter pointed out that um, she said something like, this is about empowering cross-dressers in the workplace, okay? And Rosie Duffield liked that tweet. And people were, were up in arms, cross-dressers, how dare you? But of course, it's Stonewall's definition. It's in Stonewall's definition of the word trans. So if you have a problem with it, take it up with Stonewall, you know? Mm -hmm. This is what we've been saying for so long, which is which is that... Um, not only do I not think cross-dressers are women, I don't even think they're trans in the sense that someone like, um, let's say, Christina Harrison is, is trans. Christina Harrison is a transsexual, you know. Um, and, I, I would have thought that most cross-dressers wouldn't have called themselves trans either. Uh, um, not, not before. They will. They do now because it's, a, it's now a political uh, hammer that they, that, that, you know, a lot of... Um, I have to say, mediocre men can use to kind of climb a ladder. Like Rachel.
Fox, you know, none of these people would have excelled. Well, none of these men, excuse me, would have excelled in their chosen fields, you know? So they have to go into a field where, like, you know, I, 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 I you all, you guys all know this, but uh, the, that American football team who won the World Cup, the female American football team, they played um, a bunch of high school boys uh, high school boys in a football match, and the high school boys won. These are World Cup winners, you know. So, yeah. so, so anyway, I'm kind of rambling all over the place, but it's the it, it's yeah. it's what I hope the judges don't kind of accept uh, in the Kira Bell case is, oh, there's this thing called trans, and everyone knows what it is, and we have the, to, you know. The judges seem to be asking some very specific um, thought out questions. I, I, you know, through some of the tweets I've seen. There's, um, you know, people, the judges have stopped and said, you know, can we have more information on this? Can we see this? I think that, you know, I think they're taking it um, seriously and from a position of, you know, like Neutra no neutrality. Bias. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm quite, I'm quite impressed with what I've sort of read so far. And also, again, thanks so much to all the women who are frantically um, tweeting, live tweeting. I yes. think that's, you know, such a brilliant service for all of us. Fair play to them. Yeah. I am not following it because I'm too nervous. So I have to just wait and see how it turns out. Um, I kind of sometimes dip in, but uh, it makes my heart beat faster. The idea that that what well, happens. I couldn't I couldn't follow it yesterday because I was on a twelve hour ban. Um, oh, right. what happened? But I uh, I I had replied to that tweet from um, the trans woman who was laughing about their ability to take their penis into women's faces. Oh, yes. And there is nothing nothing anyone can do to stop me. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, the independent um, journalist. So, oh, yeah, yes, I believe. Which I, believe which I always like I, to remind people it. that this psychopath is an independent journalist. The <laughs> one with the, like, anime picture and the trans flag? Yeah. So I just thought that was honestly a 13-year-old child the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he's got the kind of viciousness of a ther of of a of a child who's who's just had a huge injection of testosterone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. But, yes, just... there was there was certainly some. Uh, you know, I I felt, um, you know, like a lot of the uh, a lot of the followers were saying, "Oh, they're just joking," and you've fallen fallen for it. And I was saying, "Well, <laughs> does it, it? But it doesn't really matter. The point is, is that women can't afford classic abusive gaslighting." Not but it's also women can't afford to take jokes like not to take yes. jokes like this seriously you know yes, exactly. like women simply can't because yeah. we know that of, of course this person can can do this and there is probably not very much we can do about it um mm -hmm. but the, the thing is this person was actually delighting in saying it. anyway i replied to to this one um however there, there's there's somebody that's been following me around really sort of angrily like really a bit bit sort of stalkery saying Oh, Helen, this, 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 and this, and th so they were just mass reporting yes. um, my my tweets in reply to this, and they got two of them. So I got a a twelve hour suspension. And again, it's the same thing, just male bodied people with a penis. Um, I was sort of talking about, but uh, obviously, yeah, yeah. They, like Twitter decided that these two were were, were there. But anyway, so um, but when I came I came back last night, and I saw that somebody else had made a, a nice word cloud of my I, my tweets. I saw that. Yes. Somebody alerted me to it, and I thought this was actually this was great because yeah. it had lots of words in. There was penis, there was bodied, there was male, there was women, but there was there was trans woman, not very big. Um, I thought trans wasn't there at all, but it actually was right in the very bottom <laughs> right hand corner in a very very tiny font. And I, actually, I thought this was this was a really good um, illustration, literally an illustration of how um, my tweets actually do have this narrow focus. This is mm. what I'm interested in, simply the vulnerability of female bodies with respect to male bodies in certain situations. That's mm. it. Mm. Yeah, that so they're trying to attack you by creating a word cloud, and they're actually proving your point that you do yes, not talk no, about trans people. You're no real harassment, <laughs> no bigotry, no hate. We have, um, we, 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 we uh, Jane together. is here, and my, 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 and my, my heart rate is going up while she <laughs> is waiting. I don't want yes, to. Yes, let her in, let her in. Let's bring her in on that. Jane, hello, how are you? Ah, hey. sorry, very loud, very loud. <laughs> sorry, you. No, 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 it's me. I'll turn it down. 
Yeah, that's, uh, I was going to suggest that. <laughs> let, let, uh, women on top, women on top, always. Um, uh, I, I, wasn't quite, I wasn't quite prepared. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hi, it's Graham shouting at me. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, no one ever is prepared at that. Um, uh, uh, Jane, thank you for coming on. It's really nice to uh, to have you on the show. Thank you me. Um, very nice. It's very nice to be here. Now we were just talking about Helen getting a twelve-hour ban for um, uh, for standing up for herself. Um, Mentioning that also, male people have penises. Yes, yes, which is not allowed on Twitter. No. The the the, no. the the incels platform of choice. Um, <laughs> but very um, bad, Helen. But also, also Jane, I'd love to get your opinion on uh, not not the people like uh, uh, not the psychopaths that we've been talking about, but the this journalist I mentioned, for instance, who 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 simply cannot ask answer questions when you when you present them. Like someone like Joylan Mom is another good example. Okay, they present they present these positions that are they use terms emotive terms like you know vulnerable to trans children, all this sort of stuff. But when you put them on the spot about their beliefs, they disappear. Right. Where where do you think that comes from? What do you think is going on there? They can't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Hazarding a guess. <laughs> um, I mean, we've talked about this before, right? It's a religion. Mm -hmm. So when you have people asking empirical questions addressed to people who are coming from a place of faith-based belief, yes. you can't actually have a dialogue. Because their mindset is so, it's kind of something similar to what was going on with the judge in Maya's case, right? Mm -hmm. But dealing with people who have been conditioned to think that naming the sex of people is simply like a blasphemy, yes. kind of like Benjamin Butterworth type, <gasps> <laughs> kind of. Yes. And then you can just say, I, I saw somebody refer to that as a butter gasp yesterday. <laughs> 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 no, that's it. That's it. That's what it's called now. That's going to be oh, the channels. The I'm the registering the butter gasp is my new. Uh, <gasps> you said that people weren't born in the wrong body, you <gasps> heretic. And then Mermaid said it the next week. Two days later, Mermaids were like, we never said that. <laughs> it's only GC people that made it up to make it sound like we believe something ridiculous, which we don't. <laughs> Like, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean. But what about the people who are? What happened with W the the, the web speech I gave the other day, mm -hmm. right? So they asked me to um, speak, and I was like, "Yeah, of course, great. I'm really glad that you're doing this. That's excellent." And then they couldn't find anyone to come up against me. They right. asked. They asked Sally Hines and that Alison Phipps, and both of them just went, you know. Oh no! Of course, we're not going to give those bigots any credibility by like engaging in a debate with them about the existence of vulnerable minorities. And I'm like, well, that's fine, but you probably should. Like, it's getting to the point now where the debate is going to happen, irrespective mm -hmm. of your stalling tactics. So you should probably put someone up at this yes. point because this political <laughs> party is considering their policies based on the information that they're being given, mm -hmm. and. Now's probably the time to produce those killer arguments of yours. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, yeah. the ones you've been hiding. <laughs> the, one, the ones you've been hiding in the literature. And they're yeah. always like, <laughs> you haven't read the literature. And I'm like, I, I believe that if on page 726 of the Transgender Studies Reader, you had a knockdown argument for why male people are female, you might have shared that with us by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it is is it an emotional thing that that is there a thing do you think in human beings that they feel that there are two choices in life and one is to be be kind inverted commas and the other is to uh, do what we're doing, <laughs> you know, which is talking about stuff. And I would argue that we are actually being kind uh, by trying to prevent future Kira Bells and and and. Uh, well, I, also, to... I also I also don't think it's kind to collude with people in manipulating the entire world around mm. them to mm -hmm. to reinforce a belief, right? Because it's it's not going to make it true. Yes. Even if everybody in the whole world colluded. It still wouldn't be true, and on some level, 
you would still know it wasn't true. Yes, and it's not actually right. going to alleviate your distress because that's what right. will alleviate your distress is coming is finding some way of negotiating that distress in a way that means you can come to peace. With exactly. it. This is, this act, I think we are being kind. I come to this because I care about gender dysphoria. I care about people suffering from it, men and women and girls and boys. And I want to make sure that we understand it scientifically properly so that we give these people the proper treatment that they need. Right. This is right. absolutely about making people better, not about attacking people. You know? Right. And if you look at the, the tweets from the Care About tweets, right, it's like this is just, this is not kindness. No. Right. Sterilizing kids, just like giving them treatments that potentially destroy their sexual function, because um, because I don't even have to point this out. Because uh, yeah. an ideology exists. Because actually, they're collateral. They're collateral damage as well. The thing is, is that the ideology needs trans children to exist mm -hmm. because it's posited gender identity as an essence. Mm. And as soon as you posit gender identity as an essence. Trans children have to exist, right? right. Yes, they have to be born with the essence. Yeah, right. so yeah and what's and what's men who have dysphoria who are trying to say, I'm really a woman, I have an essence of woman, and the only way I can prove that is to go and get children and recruit them into this movement. Yes. And I've had and I've had conversations with older um males. Who, um, 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 there's there's um, no smoking, Jane. There's no smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I can have one. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had the other <laughs> And I've 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 said to people, you know, they they, they oh Graves got oh, sorry, Helen. Sorry, Helen. I was have I, been, have, I, have I been put into the naughty yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh you have. You have <laughs> he wants, he wants the swamp to be blown up. He sorry. wants it. Second hand spoke. Um anyway, and and I've pointed out. That these people, like I, I was talking once to somebody, and he was so angry, or they were so angry with me for saying that kids shouldn't have puberty blockers. And this person said, "If I'd have had them, I'd have, I'd have been so happy." And I'm saying, "You're advocating for something that will, uh, um, possibly sort of allow, not allow this child to have any sexual function for life, yeah. for something that you've got." Because it's purely, it's around your sexual function. You know, this was autogenophilia. And it was the most incredible thing to me that this person was actually saying that that he wanted this to happen to these children. Yeah. To himself up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the yeah. worst part about that is absolutely people, outrageous. But these people who say that they're adults now and they wish they had it, they also refuse to admit that most children with dysphoria get over it. They cannot right. admit that. Because right. they didn't, you know, they experienced this for you and it persisted with them. I had an argument with someone just a few days ago and I was like, well, you're just saying that every child with dysphoria needs puberty blockers because they're all just like you. And I'm telling this person, no, you're the exception, not the rule. Right. You know, yeah. this may hurt your feelings, but I don't care at this point. <laughs> you know, yeah. children are being harmed. Deal yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get yeah. over yeah. it. And if, Everyone and if else you, did. Yeah. If if you have a night, if you know, if we have historical evidence that there was, there's a ninety percent desistance rate, that's mm -hmm. that's quite high, right? <laughs> yeah. That doesn't justify putting ninety percent of people who could actually come to terms with it and go on to lead fully functional in terms of their sexual lives, right? On on a treatment that has these very I mean, I think I, I said this in the conversation with Graham last time. <clears throat> Quite often what they'll say in this context is, well, we don't think being trans is a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, yes, I understand what you're saying, but lifelong medicalization and potentially destroying your fertility and sexual function is not a neutral outcome vis-a-vis no. -vis not doing that. Yeah, being yes. trans versus not being trans is <coughs> morally neutral. You like it's being gay and being straight, these are morally neutral, but it's not medically neutral. This is a right. medical thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly, which is, which is you know, to come back to one of the yeah. arguments we've done before, it's why, the, it's why the parallel with gay rights doesn't, doesn't hold. That's right, right? Yeah. And the parallel with abortion rights, because right. you know abortion rights yes. is a, a is a is a, a temporary emergency measure that women use for various reasons. Uh, it doesn't have a long term impact. I mean, I'm sure there well, are. If it's, um, done, if it's done legally and safely, it doesn't. If it's done legally impact. and safely, it, it doesn't have a long term impact. But but right. puberty blockers, there's no there's no legally and safe safely uh, approach to it because it's unprecedented. There's no experiments on it because you can't experiment on children. Um, there's no, no long. Oh, they are. 
They are experimenting. I know. It's a, it's, it, what I mean is it's a we live... Run, we can't run trials, so we'll just run yes. a live experiment. Exactly. A yes. live experiment, right. an ongoing live experiment uh, on children. Which we don't bother you know. to do any longitudinal follow-up. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because detransitioners oh. disappear. Like, as soon as a detransitioner appears, they just pretend that person has, has, has uh, uh, disappeared off the face of the earth. A great example, uh, great example is Benji, who got into a um, uh, into a, a ding dong with Katie Montgomery, a trans activist on Twitter, and just after the ding dong disappeared from Twitter, you know. So, so like another one thing I will say, I I I I've made this point before, but I'd love to. Um, I really want I really want to drill at home with people, but it looks to me like mermaids are done. <laughs> I don't think they can come back from from all their. You know, they're they're just hopelessly um, uh, undermined. I think as an organisation, and I and I'm hoping that the Kira Bell um, case uh, brings more attention to them. But the thing I think we should all also pay attention to are all the people who used phrases like vital work when talking about mermaids. One thing you hear a lot of, like I'll give you, uh, Ollie, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly zip through this, but Ollie, uh, who direct, uh, Ollie, oh God, Lambert. his name? Lambert, Ollie L Lambert, who directed the Trans Kids documentary. He said that, um, he said that Owen uh, Jones uh, was asked to come on, but wouldn't, wouldn't come on unless there was trans people in the crew, <laughs> you know? So, um, so he said this, and and the kind of wider uh, assumption is that these trans people, who are, as we were just discussing, are a wide range of different people with in different circumstances, AGP, ROGD, all these different uh, people combined under one ridiculously wide umbrella, mm -hmm. um, are seen as experts, you know, and all these experts, people like Katie Montgomery, people like Paris Lee. <laughs> All these experts say the same, have been saying the same thing for years, which is mermaids do vital work, you know? And I hope that that as the Jenga tower uh, topples, people will now look on this as a, a, a just a completely fake position. The, 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 the trans, the AGP uh, trans people and the kind of trans women, trans identified males who, who promoted mermaids I mean, I'm hoping this means people will just stop listening to them because they obviously haven't a fucking clue what they're talking about. <laughs> I, I think I really there are there are some prominent people um, who you know your your mom hard hard stare who have been um, promoting this this stuff and you know talking like an expert, denigrating other people, blocking all 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 women, asking him questions. Um, I really do hope people people like this and people like Owen Jones are actually remembered. Oh, well, I'll, when this is, yeah. I'll make sure when this they're is over. Yeah, they're not getting, <laughs> the, the smoke is really starting to clear up, isn't it? Every time somebody, you know, the, 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 the Department of Education's announcement was a real sobering moment. And it only mm. takes one or two sobering moments before yes. people wake up and realize they haven't been looking at this thing at all with sober yeah. eyes, right? So it just takes one or two little slaps on the cheek and then people oh. start to see what's going on. Oh, you don't agree? I think it takes a lot more than that. Well, I mean, it'll take time, but it's starting. I mean, it, it's it's like it started off with little cracks and now the cracks are getting bigger and now chunks are beginning to fall off. But the whole thing is... And putting them back in. And well, no, because it's like... <laughs> putting them it's back. Like, it's like... <laughs> You know, it's like to come or to come back to the like the Jenga metaphor, right? We keep taking out really quite substantial blocks, right? And things getting a bit wobbly, but like it's nowhere near falling over, and yeah. and it's nowhere near falling over because it's held up by a massive iron pole of capitalist patriarchy. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and also people don't people don't want to interrogate themselves once they've made those kinds of commitments, right? And they've gone out to bat. You have yes. to be quite emotionally mature to actually yes. reflect on yourself and <clears throat> think, oh, maybe I need to go back and look at this again. Yeah. And, and most and people really, there's a most, huge amount of people who don't want, just don't most, want there's to. There's most people that don't want to do that. that. And, and social, you know, social conformity is an incredibly strong, like 
it's getting, it is breaking. And as the kind of silencing and the conformism and the mental kind of chanting gets a little bit less intense, more people are breaking away. But I think it's going to, I mean, I just think we have to keep, I think it's going to yeah. take a long, I think it's going to take a long time for it to really come down. I think well, it I really think is. And there's a huge, there's so much shrinking. power in it. Yeah. Can I say, but but I think uh, one other thing that uh, you you might not be taking into account, Jane, possibly is like there are people like Joel and Mom who've pushed all their chips in on a massive bluff. That's how I always think of it. Right. All their all their chips in. They've got two seven in their hand. This is poker analogy. Um, and and there's, uh, we're, we're, we're moving around with the analogies quite. <laughs> and there's a flush and a straight on the board and a possible full house. And he's got nothing. <laughs> Right, but he's pushed all his chips in, and the Kira Bell case is going to come in. He's going to have to turn over his cards. You know, he can't back down. But as we all know, there are so many people. I have written to, you know, like I tried to get people to sign in my industry to uh, sign the J.K. Rowling letter, and they simply don't reply. They just don't reply. They just pretend they haven't received the email. You know, right. and I think those people are actually waiting for a moment when it's safe. You know, yeah. they just want it to be safe. I thought the JK Rowling letter might be that moment, but it's obviously not enough. No, and this I is what I mean that like, there's a, uh, I think that there's always going to be a core group of people who are all in on, on gender identity ideology, but they mm. made a real grab at the mainstream and everybody's and they almost succeeded. And I think mm. that's not going to win. I think, mm. you know what I mean? Eventually, People who have been standing on the peripheries who are just starting to hear about this and aren't sure which where they should go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, I think they're they're starting to see now, you know, that okay, yes. the core group of gender identity ideal ideal ideologues is really not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I I I think that's true. I just I guess the, the question is, at what point does it become safe, right? Mm. And yes. it's still not, it's not yet. It's still no, not safe not yet. yet. It's safer. Because mm -hmm. there's more of us, and mm -hmm. there's more people who will have your back. Yeah, but they are still coming for people pretty hard. Yes, and yes. like people you know, what happens harder than ever. Secure. They need to harder know harder than ever. They have to. This isn't gay rights 2.0. They need to know for sure that they're not going to land on the wrong side of a momentous civil rights movement like gay rights. This yes. is why people are terrified. They want to make sure that they are 100% certain that there's no chance that they are going to have turned out wrong. Right? Also, yes, actually, that, I think that's a really, really excellent point because some of us have been here for a really long time and we've watched it unfold. Like we know, like, I, I've said this before, sometimes I think to myself, am I right? Is there anything I've got wrong here? Is, is Can I look at it? And I always think, I, I can't really see, um, you know, <laughs> what, what the problem here. But yeah. we have been thinking about it. We've seen it unfold. We've seen all of the arguments again and again, and nothing really holds up properly. Mm. Um, but yeah. but you're I'm, right. I'm, I'm still waiting. People, I'm still. Oh. I'm still waiting. <laughs> you, you, I'm, like, I'm still like, open. Your to... cat is censoring you. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm still open to the possibility that they'll produce an argument. Right. Mm. Like mm. I mean. I, I'm not convinced. I, I think it's very unlikely to happen, but I'm not ruling out the possibility that they, they could produce an argument that would convince me every time they produce something new that looks like something. But it's always the same thing, right? Yes. It's yes. always the same thing. It's like it's like Alison Phipps this morning like, had a pop about the magazine launch. Mm -hmm. and she didn't respond to anything that had been written on mm. the website for the magazine. Mm -hmm. All she did was like, you're a bunch of privileged white middle class bigots. It was like exactly. It's like well, engage with what we've actually said. Yes, right? yeah. it's not an argument that's won yet, is it? That uh, you know, it's just it just isn't. Can I can I ask about the um, the gender GP thing, the the pharmacy? Yes. Uh, you know? Before we, before we move on to a Sorry. new subject, though, uh, Helen, may I just quickly uh, explain the magazine? Uh, Jay, yes, Jane, had, on, this is how he seduced me onto the show. By we have to. We have. Well, it's it's plug, a, just a big thing. Plug. But, <laughs> you have to plug the magazine, Jane. Can you just tell us just a, a quick uh, uh, a thumbnail sketch of the um, what the magazine is and why you set it up? Uh, oh gosh, thumbnail. Me, Jane, thumbnails. Those words don't go together. <laughs> <laughs> you, basically, uh, thumbnail for you. <laughs> ba 
basically I set it I set it up. I set it up for for several reasons. I set it up because I think because there's all these newly radicalized women, right? Like feminism has basically for most women's lives been kind of in the doldrums, right? Mm. There's there's what liberal institutional feminism has been doing, right? But most women it doesn't speak to them a great deal. And they they were generally under the impression that, you know, our legal rights were more or less safe and they were getting on being busy, running their lives, running families, doing what women do. And suddenly this has happened. And I think it's really unconcealed, like the really deep levels of misogyny that still exist in society and how fragile our rights are. And... <clears throat> You know, the fact that a bunch of people can come along and go, we're just going to erase you politically and in law, and everyone just goes, well, that seems totally reasonable, and, and any woman that ejects is obviously an evil, an evil, an evil witch who needs to be burned. And everyone goes, yeah. oh, yes, yes, fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that, that has, you know, that, has, that, that means a lot of women have been radicalised right, yes. over the last three or four years and are very, you know, interested in feminist ideas and these kinds of things. So I basically wanted, and we don't have any... We don't have any publications anymore because all the feminist infrastructure either has been absorbed into big companies like Virago and things like that, <clears throat> mm. or has just been taken, you know, it's just been taken over by gender ideology, essentially. Mm. So if you are interested in the analysis of the oppression of female people as a sex class and mm. things that that brings up, there's not really anywhere to talk about that. So I basically and I, want... and I hear it is quite the talking point at the moment. Quite, quite, <laughs> quite a lot of people are talking about it. <laughs> yeah. There's not really anywhere to talk about it. Mm. Um, so I kind of wanted to take the opportunity to take this moment and kind of expand what we're doing, really, because we're very immersed in this particular conflict. And, you know, in a lot of ways, it's very horrifying and traumatic. Um, but I wanted to take the kind of energy but it's it's horrifying and traumatic but in also a lot of ways it's really wonderful because it's connected a lot of really amazing women with each other and has created a lot of very strong kind of energy and yeah. i wanted to put that into something i wanted to make something physical something well, I, something <laughs> physical and beautiful well that's something that, that can take us beyond this and something when this that is take, done, exa exactly exactly something that start it. looking forward to thinking about you know, from what has happened, what went wrong with like the loss of certain feminist ideas, and what ideas we need to um, we need to bring back and fashion together to kind of produce an analysis that can take us past this moment as well. So exciting! So, so um, that's, that's a great idea. That's, I'm so, I'm so excited about. This. I'm I'm, I'm really so I'm really really excited about it, and the team that's working on it is are really really amazing and it's going to be really beautiful as well the design's really lovely and i just wanted to make something that felt nourishing to people yeah. i think because this is a very this is a very difficult battle that we're involved in and i just wanted to make something that that gives some sustenance i think i, I, think, I think also we must you you know it's kind of uh, as you point out we must never lose uh, a magazine like yours again. Like, like it's not a fight that goes away. Like the the the, I would say that what's been happening in the last fifteen years or however long it is, twenty years, with the arrival of queer theory and and uh, and and transgender ideology and all this sort of stuff. I mean, for me, it feels like uh, men are taking territory. They're taking a huge chunk of territory because because they can, you know. They're taking all sorts of different things that belong to women, all sorts of resources that belong to women, and the yeah. fact that they've been able to get so far in doing this, it means that we can never let our guard down again. And ever. not just right. that, enjoying it, delighting in it. Yes, just absolutely delighting in it. I think yeah. that's the one. That's the thing that's shocked me the, the most. There's a lot about this, which isn't just about, I want this for myself. It's about saying, like, fuck you, women. It's, <laughs> it's the most horrifying thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah really I mean, and we get, you get that if, uh, particularly from the woke bros as well, right? I mean, because yeah. they're distinguishable from MRAs. They're just yeah. like, yes, 
you don't you don't need to exist you don't need these things we get i mean it's it's like that famous you know dawkins stuff about you know about the power of naming and and mary daly made similar points right it's it's men have always had the power to name women and to decide what are how we are represented symbolically right and i think this is really important and it's also one of the reasons why i wanted to make space and that we had this in the second wave we don't have it so much now which is you know a space in which um we get an expression of what is meaningful symbolically to women which is not necessarily exactly exactly the same thing as what is meaningful symbolically to men. We live in a culture that's entirely constructed by men's symbols and men's narratives and men's like heroic stories. Mm -hmm. and, pro porn, and, pro right. porn, pro and, well, uh, prostitution. <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the reasons, it's not an essentialist thing, it's to do with what comes out of our lived conditions, right? But people who have certain sets of shared experiences produce culture and symbolism that is different and there's no space for that anymore no. and there was during the second wave and it was you know in the tradition of second wave print media basically which is also one of the reasons why i wanted this to be printed because it then it stands in the kind of tradition of like women owned culture mm. <laughs> which, yes. is, which is very very rare actually yeah. so yeah, i bet yeah. you know, Yes. I wanted to make that space. And also, I think it'll be something nice. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited about actually having it. I'm excited about buying it for others, for other women, something that I can actually gift them, not something that's online, something I can say to them, here is a physical right. thing for right. you to have to own, to read, to just, just have lying around your house, because it does look beautiful. You know, the, already what I've seen, it's, it's, yeah. clever. it's a really, really good idea. Yeah. And I think I think it's also important because you know so much of what we've been talking about is about dematerialization, right? Is about the whole of trans ideology is this form of mass dematerialization, and one of the mm. reasons why mm. it has the traction that it does is because there's a whole generation of of people who've been brought up on the internet and who are living in a kind of dematerialized way that is unprecedented in human history. You know, and so it, it felt important to make something material <laughs> out yeah. of it. That's great. That's great. And it legitimizes things too, I think, to see something made material. These are not just opinions floating around on the internet uh, right. in the ether. These are salt. To see something in print physically, right. yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a physical connection. And it makes it yeah. feel legitimate. It really legitimizes these things. I can't wait to see it too. <laughs> um, What's I'm it called again? Tell us again the name. It's called the radical notion. The radical notion. So it's taken everyone... from the famous, the feminism is the radical notion that women are people. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, okay, but it's also, which I still think is the best statement of feminism ever. Yes. Um, <laughs> was and that all, it, um, No, I don't know who it's attributed to actually. Okay. It's just one of those like, a man needs a, you know, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle type. Yeah. Um, it probably does have an attribution, but I've actually never, I looked for it, which I probably yeah. should have done before I used it as the title of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but, um, yeah, no. I mean, but I also particularly wanted it to be a kind of, um, to kind, yeah, like I said, to, co to come back to like radical and socialist feminist principles and think about how they relate to the present situation and how we, how we, how we go forward with that it's and the words of it's the words of activist and academic sharice from oh, okay um, i've just, I've just go. it. Okay. well done i could have done that can Maybe i, suggest, I can I suggest something uh jane as the editor uh of this new um magazine for women and uh as a very very important figure in the um in the feminist movement I uh, now stella stella creasy is holding uh with stonewall a symposium or something on oh, misogyny right, yeah. and i was wondering are you going to apply to get in on the um get in on that uh, session because i think you'd be a very valuable voice in it when is this yes i just saw something about this i'm not sure but um i, I, saw, I, would I, saw, I saw i saw someone who had asked for um had asked to go because yes yeah, stonewall is stonewall going to talk to us about misogyny yes yeah, stonewall how, in, how to, interesting it is interesting <laughs> isn't it i mean like i would like to uh, one thing i'd love to ask them is what effect does including me some men in the category of women 
have in on misogyny? How, how, how does it affect our ability to talk about misogyny? Now, right. I'd love, to, and you'd be the person I really would love to see um, uh, grapple with that one. I would also, I would also really like them to answer how they are it's today. feeling about. <laughs> That's today. Oh, today. 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 No. Private Eye, Private Eye pointed out. It's not just Stonewall, of course. Private Eye have pointed out, and this really makes me so angry. I can barely. Uh, I I don't know what to do about it. Um, but Private Eye pointed out that Liberty, Amnesty, Penn, and one other group. I can't remember which group offhand. Uh, none of them will provide Private Eye with a quote uh, defending J.K. Rowling from death and rape threats. Penn. Pen, literally, yeah. the organization to protect writers' freedoms will not, not protect writers' freedom. Not Just, one. They wouldn't provide one quote uh, in defense of her. And one of the um, groups, uh, I can't remember which one it was, um, had a thing about online abuse. And two of the people they interviewed, two of the women they interviewed, sent online abuse to J.K. Rowling, calling her scum and stuff like this. <laughs> and it's it's very interesting, like with respect to that counter letter that was signed by um no. oh, oh Joanne oh. Harris. Joanne Harris. Yeah, well Joanne Joanne Harris and um, Orange is not the only fruit. Sorry. Jan, Jeanette Winterson, who Jeanette Winterson. Jeanette Winterson. It's it's very interesting the way that's framed because the letter that went before it was basically just saying we yep. condemn online abuse against JK Rowling. Didn't say anything about trans people. It just said, this is not okay. And the response is, we love you trans people. And yes, the implicit the valid meaning then, the impl in the implicit meaning then is support for trans people is dependent on tolerating and hand-waving yep. violent, sexualized, misogynist abuse of women. I've, yes. I've said this to many, many people who were saying, yes, I support this letter, I support this letter. And it was extraordinary. I mean, most people, of course, just blocked me immediately. Um, but that's exactly that's exactly the point. It it was it was very clear, wasn't it? It was a very clear response to to that. And I gave them the opportunity. I said, "Is this just a complete coincidence that you've published this letter, or is this a response? Because if it's a response, it isn't a great message. It's really, well, it's well, really, really not a great message." Well, Joe Joe Glanville, uh, uh, who I believe is uh, used to be a chair of of Penn. Uh, wrote a brilliant essay in the bookseller. I really recommend you you track it down. I might I might re, I'm hoping to be able to republish it on my site, uh, where she defended not only uh, Rowling but also pointed out. And I was I was so relieved to see this because people forget it, but the outrageous response to the Charlie Hebdo massacre by people like uh, Michael Ondaatje and and Joyce Carol Oates, you know, just an absolutely disgusting response to to elderly cartoonists being massacred in a room, uh, you know, to you know, so 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 I think Joe is someone who's got her eye on the ball and all this, and I hope that she, I think Joanne Harris is actually head of some organization oh, yeah, no she is and and joan harris is like kool-aided up to the eyeballs mm, mm. um i think she should resign after writing that letter you know if whatever organization she's with because it's a disgraceful thing to do it's a disgraceful thing to do she joan harris is an absolute disgrace to 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 not immediately condemn death and rape threats sent to an author, oh, just sent to a children's author. She is but, a but, but, but apparently... I, th I, think, I, th I think they should all resign. Amnesty, all these people in, in charge of these organizations, Liberty, Amnesty, Penn, they should all resign over this. It is, well, liberty, it is liberty, liberty, liberty has been involved in... And Index on it. Censorship. Fucking Index on Censorship. Uh, yes. That's the other group. Index <laughs> on Censorship. 
Resign, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was unexpected. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is that is that is that against YouTube's rules? I don't know. I apologize for that word. Americans don't like it. It's very big here. Uh, if, you, if you were to ban all use of it, Scottish Scottish people wouldn't be able to go online. People wouldn't I, be able to speak. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Sorry. So, listen, guys. I'm really sorry. I, I actually, I'm on my lunch break. I'm going to have to go back to work. But thank you no so worries. much. No I'm, I'm just going to leave now. You're on your lunch break. Yes, late lunch. Late lunch. It's I'm on the clock. I know. I know. I've got another couple of hours there. So I'm, I'm going to go. It's lovely to talk to you, Jane, Artie, Graham. I, I'm going to see you, Helen. See you soon. Bye, Bye. Helen. Bye, bye. We're kind of coming up to the fifty-minute mark, so so uh, uh, there's pr probably a good good uh, chance to wind it down, I guess. Although I could go on all that. I mean, I find all this just so interesting. I could. Oh, no, go I know. Mean, it, it is it is interesting, and the level of like paradox and like double think <laughs> is just you know never oh. ceases, never ceases to amaze. Well, that's another thing that I'd love to talk to you about because I think I mean one thing we've had a lot of trouble with. Uh, Jane, I think when when we're talking about the inability of people to uh, happily jump on board and 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 defend J.K. Rowling and so on and so forth, um, and I'm not talking about organisations that should defend her like the ones we've just mentioned, but I'm 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 talking more about ordinary people. And one of the biggest problems we've had is the claims of trans rights activists, the claims of queer theory and and and, and gender ideology are so mental that people thought and possibly still think that we are the ones who who are mental <laughs> like we are you know when i tell people like like they are literally saying that that men with full beards <laughs> in some cases are lesbians you know i think people have trouble actually believing that i haven't just kind of gone online and gone down a a a, a hole similar to the to the QAnon conspiracy uh, thing that goes that's going on in America, you yeah. know. How no, I mean, that's that's that. I mean, I think this is actually the crucial piece of genius, right? And from a propagandist point of view, it's like that kind of Goebbels thing about telling a big lie, right? Yes. It's it's if you produce an ideology like this, that its fundamental premise is we are going to replace the recognition of biological sex with gender identity in language, in law, across public policy, in the organization of all public space, in people's sexual orientations, just wholesale, remove this concept and replace it with this other concept. When it's such a fundamental organizing material property of human being and society, no one believes you because it would be such an insane thing to try and do. It's it's so ambitious, and and <laughs> and it's incredibly ambitious, and they're being they've done incredibly well at doing something so insane. And the reason why is because most people don't understand what it is that is happening mm. yeah. because its implications are so. I mean, and and most trans well, activists so. will deny that. I mean, I've had these conversations with yeah. Katie Montgomery where we're where we're like, Katie, we don't hate you. We're just objecting to the political erasure of sex in this place and this place and this place. Mm, and yeah. then Katie will just go, that's not happening. That's just a gender critical conspiracy theory. You're all bonkers. And I'm mm. like, no, no, here's these receipts and these receipts and these receipts and these receipts and these receipts. And, yeah. and it won't ever be acknowledged. Mm. The thing mm. is, I think mm. there's a, the idea of erasing sex and replacing it with gender identity is appealing to progressive people because they think that is solving sexism in a but, sense. Yes. It's not a coincidence that it's woke bros, it's male progressives who are attacking us more than anything else. They're, because they're male, they don't understand the importance of sex-based rights. And because they're progressive, they think they're solving problems when they're not. They're yeah. causing them. But know? they know that I don't see race is yeah. not is a it... progressive position. They know that you don't solve racism by yeah. pretending race doesn't exist. But the thing yeah. is, so why it's... do they think that you can solve sexism by pretending sex doesn't? I know, exist? but I think it goes back to the whole. It's so appealing to think that this is a new civil rights frontier, and it's so frightening the idea that. Um, you could be on the wrong side of it, right? 
So I think it's, it's just so there's just so much allure to the idea that you're on the right side of the new of the new civil rights battle that you really have to show people it's so hard to convince people that I, I think it's I think I think you're onto something. I think it's more than that though, because I think it's religious. I yeah. think it's messianic. I think it's like these people what we live in a we live in a set of social conditions in which there are really, really massive structural problems that nobody in positions of authority seems willing to even acknowledge properly, let alone do anything about. So we're all kind of terrified, right? Because we've got global warming, the the international global capitalism's wheels have come off and everyone's just, we've got authoritarianism, like, you know, shit's burning down. Literally there's fucking locusts. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. all feeling pretty like revelationly, right? And there's something about trans ideology. And we know historically when things happen like this, you get millenarianism, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that is produced in situations of political instability and uncertainty. Yes. And, you know, it's why I, I use that, um, you know, that Monty Python gif where they're going around banging their heads with the door in as who said, boof, like yeah, that. Yeah, because, yeah. Because, because that's a kind of black death type, you know, you have a complete social breakdown thing. And, yes. and millenarianism is really um, compelling to people because it's like a really hardcore salvation narrative. And mm. there's something about the... If you think about the story of transition, it's like a salvation story. I was trapped. Everything was terrible. I was on the on the in this bleak wilderness by myself, on the verge of like you know losing my sense of being and survival. And then I went through this transformative process, and now I'm saved. Yes, it's or... a, it's, a, it's a redemptive story. And then people are told, all you have to do to save these people is be nice to them and validate their beliefs and then they will be saved. And how could anybody refuse to save them? That would be such an evil and cruel thing to do. And it yeah. seems, I think, in conditions where there's actually a lot of political hope, because it's, it's actually bonkers, right? Because people have been managed somehow to convince that like trans rights is somehow this massively transformative political project that, that is at the core of everything. And that if we just... If, if trans rights are secure, then suddenly there'll be no capitalism and there'll be no environmental crisis and like it's going to save us from everything. And, and there's something going on where people need something to hold on to. They need, a, they, need a, they need a redemptive narrative they can hold on to. And this gives it to them. And then they think, all I have to do is believe you and you will be saved and everything will be saved. And Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it would, the funny thing about it is they actually provided me with the same thing because fighting it, I feel... Like I was worried about climate change was worrying me to a huge degree, still does. But this fight came along and I was so delighted that I could be involved in something where I might actually be able to help affect change that I threw myself into it. It's all consuming, you know, and That's I think a very that, good point, yeah. yeah, and I think that that that, you know, yeah, that feeling of control is uh, is is very important to us. And you're right. It's just slipping away. Have you seen the social dilemma, Jane? I have. I have. I watched it. I watched it the other day. And. I mean, I think there are lots of relevant things to. Um, it could be. Well, it could be about the trans issue. It could just be about the trans issue. It could be called the trans dilemma. And, and <laughs> sorry, actually, I stole that observation off Artie Morty. Artie, Artie yeah. Yeah, said that last night to me. It's so true, you know. Um, uh, but I, I and I was saying that I thought the fictional bits were, were a tiny bit reefer madness. They uh, were a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but but the interviews were really fascinating. I especially like that guy with the dreadlocks. I thought he was brilliant. Oh yeah, he was great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I mean from a feminist perspective, it's very interesting, right? Because 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 you know, to come back to what I'm trying to do with the magazine, the argument that I want to make really, and that um, is that. In a patriarchy, everything is structured around extraction. Everything is an extractable resource, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something very interesting that they were saying at the end of that, where they were like, now they have turned, he was saying, you know, you know, it used to be a tree or a diamond mine or whatever, and now it's us. Actually, it's always been us, but usually previously it was just less privileged people, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Humans have always been used as extractable resources. Women are used as extractable resources. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now they're using the they're using the attention of like the entire population as an extractable resource with no concern for the well-being of the people from whom that is being extracted, right? Mm. And that's the end point of the logic. Right? It's always been the end point of logic. All human value gets lost. When you run a society entirely around logics of extraction and profit, this is what happens. All human value ends up being like, you know, thrown away in the end. Yeah. We're just we're just con consumer producer units. And then when we're old and we're not useful con consumer producer units anymore, we cease to have any value. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's illustrative. I think of the of the general problem, right? And it also relates to the trans issue because that's all actually a fight over recognition, right? In in, in a fundamental mm. sense, mm. it's a fight over trying to extract recognition from other people by coercing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, I, I thought that the the I think the point they were making that we're polarized politically. Um, it kind of, it's kind of. I think they were trying to say that it's like Trump versus Antifa type of those kind of those kind of fights. But as we all know, you know, we've we've all lost friends because of this, because of the polarization of this uh, of this um, uh, debate. You know, and the you know unless that, unless something fundamental has changed about the way social networks uh, give different information to different people. As was pointed out in, in, in the film, that wherever you are, if you Google, if you do a Google search, you'll get results that that are uh, that are tailored towards your pre existing prejudices. Unless that unless that is uh, addressed, I don't know. I think we're going to see more Trumps, more gender ideology, more QAnon, lots and lots of things that that are just going to divide us and make us. Um, terrified of each other you know i mean I, th I think that's true i don't think it's only social media though i guess that's where i why i think really? social, i think social well no i think it's also structural and economic right like i, like I said like under conditions of this kind of structural instability that we're in it always produces po it always produces authoritarianism and polarization because authoritarianism is a response to fear, actually. So in, yes. in conditions where things are unstable, I mean, to some extent, this is like the 30s, right? There was the crash in 2008, mm -hmm. and now we are at a lot of these social effects that we're seeing are um, symptoms of responses to a, a state of global instability in which there is no leadership mm. whatsoever about yes. what we're going to do. We're facing a monumental economic, um, uh, environmental crisis, and the global economic system is, bro is broken, and yeah. everyone's just going, la, 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 like, just, just wind it up and, like, keep it going. Pour some more, pour some more fairy dust into the machine and give it another <laughs> crank and it will, like, keep on running. And, yeah. and, the, and we have authoritarianism everywhere. We have the, the rise of the right everywhere. The left is becoming increasingly authoritarian as well, as we know. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely being exacerbated by social media and quite possibly, you know, um, deliberately exacerbated by bot factories and bot farms and whatever else, right, for the purpose of destabilizing yes. our societies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, social media is not helping. But I think it's, I think, I guess what, I, I don't think we're, we're, we're disagreeing in a way because I think now that social media is so uh, sewn into the fabric of capitalism that uh you know it's hard to disentangle where capitalism starts and where social media ends if you know what i mean like yeah, the yeah I, don't think, yeah I don't think you can at all i mean there it's it's an entirely i mean that's what was interesting about the social dilemma right mm. i don't think it's the tech i mean some Karina, one of my friends would argue that it's got something to do with the structure of the technology and the way in which it's modeled as well, and that it's modeled around certain kinds of assumptions about how people interact, which are 
which tend to tip it towards co a confrontational form of interaction rather than being collaborative. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's fundamentally to do with the fact that it's being it's that they're being it's being run for profit, right? Yeah. Like they say, we use all these things for free. And actually, they have to be monetized. And the way in which they're monetized is by manipulating our attention in various nefarious ways yeah. with no concern for whether that's in the interests of us as a society or as a democracy or as an individual or as a child or whatever our human needs are, because human needs don't register inside a system that's run on the basis of a profit imperative only. Well, I think yeah. it's something the fact that it can anonymize people who are receiving the money versus the people who are spending the money. And what I mean is that like every time a young girl decides that she's trans, somewhere out there, a man gets a house. <laughs> it's true though. Every so single true. girl That's uh, somebody's getting people. a house. But it's, it's, it's anonymized. The, the, the system that connects that man getting that house and that girl deciding she's gender dysphoric is through the social networks and the economic networks. It's not one to one, but in a sense right. it is. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah I'd yeah, like yeah, to understand yeah. more of how that all works because there's a tremendous motive <laughs> that's pulling, you know, the, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a tremendous amount of power and money coming down through this thing. And it's, you know, we have some idea about what that's about. Um, I don't think it's the only motive, but um, at this point, I think there's like a kind of a whole thick kind of, you know, thing with where lots of people's different motives are all tied up together and some of those mo motives are definitely commercial pharmaceutical mm. yes. like medical industrial complex motives and i yes. think also some of the motives are political actually because i think if you can if you can um funnel like a whole lot of political energy Every now and again, I have this like weird sort of daydream where I imagine sort of two, two, four, two, three, four, five, six generations hence, like, you know, some small human family like camping out in some wreck of some like flooded, burnt like, X city. Yeah. And the and the kids are saying to the parents, like, didn't you know this was happening? Yeah. And the and the parents say, Yes, but we were distracted by arguing about whether women had penises. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I, I, I think that's a brilliant way to end it. <laughs> that's a brilliant. We've gone on for past the hour, uh, um, so let, maybe we should wrap it up. But Jane, will you will you d do this? I know you don't. Um, uh, uh, I'm not sure how much you enjoy the, things like this, but <laughs> I, it's I, such I, a I, pleasure I... having you on. I, it's not it's not that I don't enjoy them and I'm just like so busy it, at the moment. Yeah. I don't I don't have the like I'm trying to do the magazine and I'm also working on this other report and I'm teaching and like it, I'm, I I I and, and I'm an introvert basically yes. that's the that's the issue. If I yeah. don't lie down in a darkened room for enough portion of time I get this like crackling in my brain <laughs> and then I start losing it. <laughs> well, uh, maybe maybe we can get together when there have been big shifts. I think that might be an interesting thing to do. Like, yeah, and, there's, and there's certain moments when I always think, I wonder what Jane thinks of this. So I'd I'm, love um, to get you on. I'm, al I'm also hoping that things are going to ease up a little bit towards the end of the year. I'm trying to carve a little bit of space to, for things right. to be a bit, a bit calmer. So, well, well, in the meantime, can't wait for the magazine. I presume I have a free subscription. But I will buy it if I have to. Um, and um, and thank you so much for joining us, Artie. A pleasure as always. And, it's lovely. Um, it's lovely. It's lovely to see you both. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thank and we'll again. see you. We'll see you next time. All right. Hello. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. bye. Oh, and thanks for all the comments, everyone. Bye bye. Oh, I gotta go too. We're Are still we here. Still great. Has he just? Him? He's just. He's just left us here. <laughs> We're trapped. Bye. We're still alive. Okay, yeah. let's just turn it off. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. Go. I Bye. forgot I have to no. end it. I forgot <laughs> I have to end it. <laughs> I didn't mean to press.